Praise the Lord, my dear brothers and sisters. A warm welcome to one and all of you, and I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As always, it gives me the pleasure. I'm very delighted, happy. I'm pleased, and I'm almost floating in the sky. <laughs> the reason is because we are doing the most important thing <clears throat> in life, and it's not only our duty, it's not only the tradition, it's not only the, uh, you know, the responsibility. Many people think in, on these lines. But I always uh, tell one thing for sure, that these things cannot take us to the kingdom of heaven, for sure. Yeah, you need to understand this very clearly. But one thing that definitely takes us to the kingdom of heaven <clears throat> and that is the passion that we have in the word of God. Yes, the passion is something that which money cannot buy, which um, education cannot buy, your um, what I say, your qualification cannot buy, your money bank balance cannot buy and anything that is materialistic it cannot buy. But there is one thing that is definitely possible that you can get closer to the name of Jesus is the word of God. Word of God is the connecting bridge with all of these aspects, with all of these parameters, which you definitely don't realize while you are here on earth, but you'll be awestruck to see that the simple... Um, <clears throat> effort you made reading the word of God is not a great effort many people call it as a burden oh brother I need to read the word of God you know brother writing the word of God people gave their lives you know that yeah people sacrifice their lives I told you this many times they have shed their precious blood as children of God to get this message reach to you and me they have shed their precious blood i would say yeah they were saints of god <clears throat> and yet they did not even bother about <clears throat> sorry did not even bother about their lives and they sacrificed their families their health their wealth and whatnot and they definitely have shown that great passion for Christ which you and I do not have that's exactly my point why because reading the word of God itself is like a big pain what a sad situation isn't it or what a sick situation <laughs> reading the word of God oh I don't have time I'm busy and all that you do not know how much it cost and only for during the late 15th century or after 14th century and especially during 15th century is when they get the got the printed Bible, first printed printing Bible that happened in Latin, right? And after that, because Romans were the superpowers, even at that point of time. Then after 16th century, I told you one brother, I forgot his name. Um, he came forward and he translated this word of God. And then after you see, there are a lot of people who came forward to sacrifice their life and blood. In translating into regional languages in India, I'm saying, right? And also in the other uh, parts of the world. And therefore, are you telling me that you definitely don't have time? Think through it. Because why? You have to uh, give an account in the day of judgment. These many people, all these people will come and line up in a queue or in a row. They will all be seated. Yeah, and then uh, probably some good chairs would be given for them or good thrones would be given for them. They are ministers for God. They gave their lives. And Jesus will rise up from his throne and such people reach. Yeah, and you need to understand this, that you have no escape, my brother, my sister, you have no escape. And you got to be very careful for this reason that you cannot deny any further that you have this excuse, that excuse, and that reason, and this reason. All right. Now, a warm welcome, by the way, to this session where we are uh, dealing with this series under the power of authority. And I'm more or less confident that I am going to close this 
um, today um, as a this is going to be our last session more or less right and we had been discussing through the powers of authority and if you are operating uh, or for example you are functioning under this authority that's the right thing to say right uh, you will exercise the powers in such a way that the whole world will witness yes and uh, that's where we had been spending ample time enough time from the word of god and uh, we have really progressed very well so far so good now on the continuation of uh, the same subject and uh, various illustrations we have given already um, you definitely know that you know the uttermost importance for you in your life is nothing but the word of god and that's why i'm super confident that this word of god is the one which can deliver us from all sorts of deceptions yes you all agree with me okay now on the same lines you read from the word of god um uh, 1 corinthians chapter 11 verses 1 to 15 or 16 paul left behind few instructions in that very specifically we will be going through 1 corinthians 11:3 but i want you know want you to know that the head of every man is christ the head of women is man and the head of christ is god he brings in that hierarchical information um narrated very well and it starts from the women the head of the women is man and the head of the man is christ and the head of christ is god he unders- anybody who understands this doctrine will no way by any means they will be defaulters or they will be violating the standards or they will be in a position to say no to god and yes to devil and all that you will never see that uh, happening at all yeah why because they always know which authority they fall under and which authority they they need to consult under what circumstance that's exactly what you don't see in the life of um eve right eve did not understand that the head was adam although she understood the theory but practically she ignored it and we spoke from the book of genesis 3 and i've explained to you already in the previous sessions that for many months or many years or many days the secret conversation between eve and devil continues because when adam comes he falls into deception first of all he was a he was very feeble right he believed her blindly he should have questioned but on the other hand don't think he, the guy was involved in any of these conversation that's why he was able to blame the women in front of god which is not a good habit because he blamed god also this woman whom you gave kind of language he uses he blames god and the women blaming the women is okay but blaming god is not okay and first of all blaming itself is not okay <laughs> yeah if you are the child of god you will refrain from three habits complaining murmuring and gossiping and grumbling all the other habits also a big list of things you can find in second timothy 3 1 to 9 but this guy went in the mode of complaining forgetting that his he also failed in his life right it's not only eve who is supposed to be blamed but it was adam who also takes the equal blame and equal um what to say uh, 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 equal curse or equal punishment as much as eve is punished the reason is because this guy always have refrained from her presence is what i could think of yeah because if he was very intimate with eve and having just two people in the world when eve goes in search of a third person what's the possibility of adam missing eve's presence yeah 
see as much as women understand that yes the head of the family is their husband correct agreed how about husbands you also understand what is your responsibility what is your role exactly the reason why we picked up the subject that the husbands and wives they work in partnership husbands don't blame wives wives don't blame husbands both of you are equally responsible if the wife slips away both are to be blamed if the husband slips away both are to be blamed why they work in partnership you got to have that fellowship you got to have that intimacy it's not possible for the wife to follow the husband wherever he goes and that's provable in genesis 3 what happened was the lady went to fetch water or something like that and Eve stays uh, see, sorry adam stays back and he takes care of the animals and the garden and all that and she says some excuses she gives yeah, i will go till there and i'll play with those animals and come back and all that adam should have told yeah let's go and play together come but he said okay fine you go never ever leave your husbands alone or wives alone yes of course the exceptions are workplaces and stuff like that and that's where bible helps the wives and the husbands with the doctrines of christ and the doctrines of christ are something which is teaching us the fruit of the spirit which gives you all sorts of conscious conscience and gifts of the holy spirit which gives you the spirit of wisdom knowledge and discernment that you can fight against the wiles of the devil and not necessarily husband comes in protection for hus- uh, wives and wives comes in pr- come in protection for their um husbands Holy Spirit comes as a protection to both of them. He lives inside of you. You walk in that conscience, it's enough. But Adam and Eve, the scenario was different. They had fellowship with the Father. Therefore, the concept of Son or Holy Spirit was unnecessary because Father himself was coming directly to talk to them. And after all, the, the Lord God, while he was talking to them, he also taught them wisdom and knowledge. And he also told that there is a tree of life. You can eat the fruit of it. In other words, the tree of life and the fruit is nothing but the fruit of the spirit that's what it symbolizes galatians 5 verse 16 onwards yeah learn to walk in the spirit not uh, walking according to the flesh or the carnal desires if you eat the tree of life sorry the fruit of life from the tree of life this is exactly what you would be doing in your life and you would do not you would not think any different from god thinks and since they slipped off from all of these instructions given to them by god not too many instructions not too many laws not too many commandments just one be obedient to my voice that do not touch the fruit of the evil and knowledge and you have everything else they couldn't keep up the law because why the lust is so powerful it pulls you it has the magnetic pull and to resist that lust to resist the wiles of the devil it's not enough that you stand tall with your head knowledge head filled knowledge many people walk by the scriptural knowledge but they don't have wisdom they don't have powers and they don't ask for it either i know bible brother no problem for me this is the way they think and that's when the you know the devil plays a key role in fooling them even more yeah and once they've fallen is when they understand yeah this is the wile of the devil and yeah i should have been careful but it will be too late for you brother why would you go through that scenario like how eve went through that scenario and it was too late for her and that's where you know bible leaves us this beautiful doctrine of being very careful being walk, you know walking in the spirit walking in not walking according to the desires of flesh walking in the spirit for which you need to have a fair understanding what are the fruits of the spirit and we have spoken through the fruits of the spirit in multiple um messages okay so the point i'm trying to make here is the head of every man is christ and the head of every woman is man adam and eve might have forgotten but there is no reason there is no need for you to forget because the doctrines are very clear you have the printed bible the printed copy which is, which tells you know which preaches and speaks to us very clearly and the father himself is talking to us today okay and for all the people the head of the man is christ it doesn't mean that for the head of the women christ is not the head no not like that don't take in little tense certain things you cannot take in little tense but then 
Christ cannot become your head if you are not submissive to your husband. And husbands don't behave like that Maharaja sitting on the throne, right? If you are that husband, if you are playing the role of Christ towards your family, you need to learn the principles from the life of Christ. Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 and 1 to 4 also you can read. Spirit of humility, Christ-like mindset, lowliness, of, lowliness in mind, serving others, serving attitude, helping. She is feeble. That's why God made you the head over her that you could protect her, take good care of your wife and your children. You don't have to behave like the dictator or Maharaja. Hey, where is my coffee? Something like that. Yes? If your wife is not well, that day kitchen belongs to you. You become the cook. You become the person who cleans the toilet and the floor and what not. I'm practicing, practicing that and Oh, so what? You are sick and when you get well, you are taken uh, clean. Until then, I will eat in the hotel and I will get you some food. And you come, come home and throw the, hey, here is your food. Come on, get up and eat. This is not called as the spirit of humility or lowliness in mind or serving attitude or the love you have for your, for your wife. If you are not able to love your wife with all your heart, mind and soul, your life partner, you, you, take, an, you take an oath on the wedding day before Christ that, only death can depart us and no other circumstances, no other, I don't remember the exact script, okay? Uh, no other incidents, no other troubles or quarrels can separate us. In, uh, no sickness can separate us. You also made that vow. I remember saying that. So when your wife is sick, you don't yell at her and how many times you will fall sick and all that. There are husbands who do that. Rather, please support her. Yeah, ensure that you give the necessary support. If required, you go to the kitchen. If you require, you go to the bathroom and clean it off. Yeah. Therefore, she gets well. And also, you need to pray over her sickness. And I'm just teaching certain responsibilities of every head of the family that is man. And similarly, of course, women are really great. You know, they take good care of the home and the husband. They cook and... Uh, yeah, that's why I have, have tremendous respect for all the women. They are feeble, but they are the strongest, you know. All the women, uh, in the book of Luke, you can take and read just before 20, uh, 23. In Luke 23, you take and read list of um, uh, women who were there on the day to embalm Jesus. And they had the guts to go to the um, tomb and ask the Roman soldiers, they could have got raped also, right? The Roman soldiers were brutal against the women. And they don't go in public alone. But I think they called all the men, come and escort us and all that. No man is ready to escort. Mary Magdalene, mother of Mary, Joanna and all those ladies, they go together as a big gang. And many other women, Bible says, they couldn't number, they couldn't name all of those. Brother Luke did a fantastic job in capturing everything possible. But this specific one, he could not <laughs> because the gang was so huge. Uh, he did not uh, witness the incident by himself, but he spoke to all the ladies, probably, sisters. And they, the, they had the guts. They have the warmth. Yeah, they're very bold people. They are very courageous. When men are deprived in their heart, when men are feeling so depressed and all that, it's the women who will have the responsibility. Don't wait. Oh, anyway, he is the head. And what can I talk to the head? No, not in literal terms. I keep telling you. When he needs support, you got to minister to his needs. You got to advise him. You got to help him. You got to encourage him. Yes, you are his strength. You are his life partner. And that's what God would have expected from Adam during that incident. Not complaining, this woman whom you gave, both of you go to hell. This is what Adam speaks against God, judging him. Don't you think so? Adam was judgmental on God, saying that this woman whom you gave, He's the one who pushed me to the temptation that for God, you deserve death too. <laughs> Can you believe? Adam talking to God in this language. Why? Because the guy did not understand his responsibility. He did not understand the authority given to him from above. That is another authority. That's the kingdom of heaven which gives him the powers. And he is authorized to operate those powers and govern his family and lead them. On the right side. But rather Adam would have opened his mouth. And first of all blamed himself. Saying that father I am really sorry. That I should have taken care of her. I slipped off. 
although i didn't have any interaction with the devil i'm equally to be blamed and forgive me and my wife i slipped off from the responsibility perhaps that was the reason that eve had fallen into that sin and for that he shouldn't have eaten that fruit you see theoretical knowledge and empty a prayer in your empty mouth and empty head doesn't mat matter in an empty heart doesn't matter anything to god doesn't mean anything to god rather you should be a person who is the doer of the word you need to show that respect to the word of god and then god honors it but he ate the fruit then also he had a chance yes god we slipped off i am the first accused i am sorry yeah i should have inquired i should have spoken to her every day where did you go while she was telling some lame excuses and making her way in, in secret yeah I, i slipped off and also forgive my wife because the reason is not her it's me i am the accused therefore for my sake forgive stephen made the same prayer minutes before he was dead and gone but forgive those people let the sins of my blood or blood shed be not upon them jesus made the same prayer forgive to them forgive them because they knew not what they are doing but these guys went ahead and said oh that's okay may the blood of jesus be upon us and our household and our inheritances descendants and you know what happened for 20 centuries 90 until 1948 they were harassed by almost every single country in the world and the second world war was the uttermost disaster that the entire world business were witness 6 million jews were put to death in one room poisonous gas was released and ibm was a company who designed that there's all history you you can go and understand and people who are working in ibm don't get offended you did not write the program so don't get offended but i'm just telling you right and these were the this is the history and the reason if you take and see they have not understood under whose authority they speak under whose authority they function and what powers they obtain from which authority respectively if you know the authority obviously you know the kind of powers that were given to you from that authority and therefore naturally your conscience your alertness your diligence everything comes to light or especially the condition of your spiritual quality your spiritual senses your spiritual values your spiritual priorities will come to light on whose side you are but you don't tend to watch you don't tend to ask these kind of uh, you know questions that are typically called as you know the reasoning skills adam should have got that reasoning skills but then i think he ignored he took it lightly because I, as i told you there were only two people he thought bad wish she would have gone she would have gone to play with animals who is that to talk to her unless we beget a child then you know he didn't even know the concept of children you know that he got to know later that you know eve was named only after she became pregnant you all know that or not genesis 4 if you take and read uh, you will you will not see the woman 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 only will be written over there right adam said and lord god put a deep sleep and he took the ribs and made of the flesh and he, then the rib he made into a woman very interesting thing is i think he kept on calling her woman until the sin entered into her life and after they are departed from the love of god yeah now adam knew his wife genesis 4:1 new eve his wife and she conceived and bore cain yes and i have got an a man from the lord because until then they didn't know um uh, you know very interesting thing is they did not beget the child before sin entered into their life that tells they were not very intimate they were not very close they were in the honeymoon period but i don't think they know know each other carnally but they were trying to get along that's what it simply means right and uh, i'm just still on stuck there i'm i'm not very sure that i will be able to finish <laughs> this session may not be the last session but let's see yeah what i'm trying to say here is very interesting facts 
He did not call her by name. Why? Because they were not intimate. He called her, hey, women, lady, come here. So you call the servants, right? Hey, come here, clean the bathroom. Huh? I'm going out and coming. I ensure that you get, go to the market and buy all the vegetables. Yeah, and clean, mop the floor and take care of the bathroom and take care of the children and go and pick them up from the school and all that. Okay. And then he goes. Whom do you talk in such a tone? Tell me. Maid servant. Probably he said, women, women, the women whom you gave to me, the women whom you, whom you uh, gave to me and all that, you know. And God also talks in the same language. Why? Because God wants Adam to name everyone. Yes. Adam gave name to the cattle, the birds of the air and the beast of the field. Genesis 2.20. But Adam didn't have the helper and therefore he couldn't name the helper who was not yet formed of his rib. And God brought in the deep sleep and then he made Eve out of his rib. And he, that is Eve. But he did not call her Eve. Here is the woman God presented. And then God left him alone, right? And man shall, and therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. And this is reminded even in the New Testament by Paul the Apostle is what I think. I'm not 100% sure. In one of the epistles, it should be there. But God was the one who gave the privacy. Every parent's listening to me. When your children is married, do not interfere into their lives. Saying that, again, the authority principle only I'm talking, right? We were the one who begot you. We were the one who educated you. We were the one who gave you food. We were the one who gave you medicines when you were sick. We were the one who took you to school. We were the one who dropped you. We were the one who picked you. We were the one who gave that money. We were the one who gave you the pocket money. We were the one who brought that snack. We were the one who got this, you know, pet dogs and pet cats. We were the one. We were the one. We were the one. Yeah, that's over. On the day you get your child married. Yeah, you may have a girl child and she may have to go and live. Um, in the in the in a, in her in-laws place, that's by tradition, right? Bible has taught us that. And yes, it's a very very sad moment for the parents. Yes, they have brought the child for a very long time. I'm not disagreeing to it. Yeah, but the we were the one concept is over. Your authority is over because the girl belongs to someone else, and she falls under her husband's authority. Yeah, every man is the head over his wife. Therefore, you got to silently back off. Does it mean that when the child is coming for help and when the child is um, going through sickness or any kind of problems and all that, you would say, ah, we have nothing to do. That is wrong, right? You need to still care, care, take a good note of what she is doing, but don't deploy spies and all that, right? Um, but then gently you could visit her not very frequently, probably once in a month or something, and then say hello to the in-laws and all that, and you know, and your brother-in-law and all that. Sorry, your your son-in-law and all that, and then you come back home and provide them everything that there is a need. And your child calls up for any help, and you provide them money needs, materialistic needs, etc. That's different. But if you don't interrogate or interfere, yeah, is husband taking good care of you? Huh? Huh? How are your how is your mother-in-law? Huh? That is a plant which recently I discovered. Mother-in-law's tongue. <laughs> and you know what is the plant? It's actually called a snake plant. And looking at the plant, the snakes get terrified. It doesn't uh, emit any kind of essence or flavor or fragrance or something like that. Uh, initially, I was thinking some smell is going to come out of this plant and it's going to be scared and gone. But looking at the plant, that it is like in the snake's nature, snake plant, the snake itself will be scared. And therefore, they named that plant as mother-in-law's tongue. <laughs> that means you can imagine uh, the state of mother-in-law's tongue and mother-in-laws don't get offended, right? Because every one of us will have to become father-in-law or mother-in-law someday. Therefore, you will go through that scenario. Today, you might be laughing. <laughs> it's for you. But there is a day coming where you will become the same. Uh, you will get into the same position. And my point is, don't wait until the day. This is your chance. That you could always coach your mind. If you had to become that mother-in-law, what would be your position? Because a lot of places, I see that it's not the husband who rules the wife. I'm talking about the son who gets married. But it's their parents. And this law applies to even the boy's side, not on the girl's side. Yeah? And this is the common law. This is the universal law of many, many people 
think it applies only to the girl children's parents right no it belongs to the boy side also that they need to give the privacy that space if possible you please you know uh, ask them to move out to a different facility and live with more with more freedom and probably you can take help from someone else but yes it depends on the boy and the girl if they are willing to live with you yes don't ask them to get out forcefully this is all part of the law of authority the principles that you learn from this law of authority yeah and don't behave like that maharajas and maharanis and saying that ah you came to my house and how dare oh you should imagine how much they trust you and they have given their daughter in marriage to your son therefore you will take good care of the of the of the of the girl child and she's feeble anyway girl children yeah and she is gets into gets into a new environment new culture new atmosphere new people but you start judging her nudging her saying that ah what is this you are sleeping so late and all that new culture give her the time teach her kindly gently in other words you just leave her freely for some time and let she will learn looking at the way how you are kind to her loving compassionate i'm sure any child is going to be touched and you are that mother to her you are that father to her because the mother and father have stepped out of their role and husbands don't compromise when your parents are asking you to dictate this to your wife instruct this to your wife you should say let me decide let me talk to god and refer the scriptures like these 1 corinthians 11 refer very nice scriptures yeah more or less sure that this is not our last session okay okay i'm coming to the original point he calls her women 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 and god also calls and god doesn't emphasize you you might have noticed god calls adam and he says verse number 19 genesis 2 19 out of the ground the lord formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to adam he commanded hey every bird every animal come here all of you assemble attention and all of them stand <laughs> in that attention position wow very cute animals no animals uh, obey but men are the ones who don't obey don't you think the similar instruction god gave to adam and eve hey do not touch the fruit in the tree similarly he said hey all the birds of the air and the animals of the field come here they all came obeying obeying god yeah and the law of the nature is submissive they have submitted and surrendered to god have you seen any time the law of the nature being disobedient to god saying that waters all of them disobeying disobeying say that we will cross our boundaries that's the reason we are alive three fourth is filled with water to cover the remaining one fourth of ground how long it would take tell me but they obey the law of the nature obeys to god why because they have surrendered themselves under the authority of god similarly the animals one or two they come mischievous animals are probably they what to do they don't get water they come it's not their intention to kill human beings but then they are scared they are going to harm that's why they kill actually and they kill they don't take the human beings to the forest like that they they just hurt them or kill them and run away why because they are scared but they are getting killed right the law of the nature and the animals they are obedient but these two were not obedient now god calls everyone i mean everyone in the sense every animals and every beast of the field asking adam to name genesis 2 19 20 but he did not call the women women come here adam come here adam name this women no <laughs> why because god understands the limits of his authority and that's exactly what i'm talking to parents i'm talking to parents even after your son gets married you don't have authority over him you cannot order him hey call your wife here both of you sit down how dare you mistreat us how dare you ill treat us i've seen such fights in many many families and many families have kicked out the parents or the parents kicked out their children yeah and that's the wiles of and the trick of the devil you know yeah his principle is to divide and rule his principle is to always bring that calamity its principle is to spoil that oneness that unity he wants to diversify and he wants to distract us he wants to uh, induce those quarrels and disputes and all that do not give room that's why you got to pray together as a family you got to be in that practice of praying together and when you are together when you have that oneness 
Tell me where is the room for the devil? Are you learning all these principles? Huh? I'm talking to you. Very important subject. Very important subject for every family. And I'm talking from the scriptures. Correct me if I'm wrong. You're welcome, my brother, my sister. You can leave your comments in the YouTube channel. Yeah, I'm talking especially about Indians. In Europe and America, I think they have a very good culture. At least this one, they fall <laughs> in line to the word of God, every, except everything else. <laughs> yeah, but we, everything else, we tend to embrace, oh God, my God, mighty God and all that. But these are the basic principles and we don't tend to follow or pay attention. And even if somebody would enter into homes to admonish or advise or exhort little, but that's it. You kick that guy left, right, center and blue, black and blue, you beat him up. Next time, don't come to advise me like this. You get all worked up. How dare you walk into my house, my family, my rights, my boundary, my decision. All is mine. Somebody come, comes with this Bible, the word of God, and they tell you, hey, this is wrong. But you don't pay attention. Then what spirit you have and under what authority, sorry, under whose authority you are, being governed or who, which is the authority that governs you. It's the devil. Without a doubt, I can say this. But look at God. God, the Father, can you believe? God, the Father himself, oh my goodness, understands his limits. Yahweh, Father, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, the Master of the Universe. Every planet is obedient. And he says, this is the distance you shall maintain. Son, and Pluto, this is the distance. Pluto and Mars, this is the distance. Moon, this is the distance. And within the moon, he dictates, hey, this is all you should be doing. And all of you should function this way. Okay? And at this speed, you shall revolve. The earth shall revolve. And yeah, the moon revolves around the earth. I'm not good at science. Don't worry. Okay? Moon revolves the earth. The earth revolves the sun or whatever it is. Right? He dictates and the nature, you know, submits and obeys God. The law of the nature have submitted themselves in the hands of God. Every day that's why sun rises and sun sets. Every day that's why I see moon doing its job. Every day you see that the dew of the heaven is being poured out and that's why you see snowflakes and that's why you see rain coming in its season and summer hitting the ground and all that you will see. But God never orders anything like that to the mankind. He gave the free will, beloved. Why? Because God knows the limits of his authority and authoritative principles. If God knows and God maintains his limit, who are you? My father-in-law, my brother-in-law, my parents, my dear beloved son-in-laws, whoever it may be, you should know the definitions of your relationship by standards, by law, by principle. First of all, learn that. Yeah, before you become husband and wife, husbands, before you become, you are now a, what, what you are called as what, bachelor and ladies are called as spinsters. Yeah, before you get married, you better understand, understand your roles and responsibilities. Yeah, as a husband, or as a daughter-in-law, or as a son-in-law, and after you become father or mother, and after you become grandmother or grandfather, you should know everything before you step into this new entity called this marriage. Where are you learning this from? Scriptures. Genesis 2, 24 and 25. Yeah, she was taken out of man, and immediately, see, God backs off. No, backs of means not rubbing them into, into the hearts of Satan. He's so decent, gentle, loving. And he respects that relationship. You're learning, huh? I hope you, you do. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother. Now, who is the father and mother to Adam and Eve? God, Yahweh. Father in heaven is the father. Father in heaven is the mother. He spoke everything that's needed to Eve. If he spoke everything that's needed to Adam. Right? And he joined and be joined to his wife and they shall become one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Why? Because the glory of the Lord surrounded them. That is like Shakina glory. Maybe 10,000 volts. They move around. Glory of God surrounded them. And they were not ashamed of their nakedness. Why? Because no one else can see except them. Which is okay. But when sin 
came in their lives they saw the naked because glory of the lord left them and instantly they were able to feel that's a different subject i don't want to get in there they were able to feel yeah but that's not a so different for a subject it is if you fall apart from the authority you 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 fall away from your authority you make a choice i'm very 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 surprised about the christians how come christians listening to me you're not able to feel that god departed from your life the day you have sinned tell me adam and eve got that clear indication they were you know they were given the clear notification that yes god is gone man why because glory left and that's called as conscience in the new covenant standards and the holy spirit gives us the conscience he reminds us hey father is gone father is gone you lost the relationship you lost the fellowship and i am also going to get away and before he goes he leaves that message why because he's compassionate he's our helper and why if you are playing the role of a helper this is how compassionate you will be towards your husband you will not go and talk about your husband to your mother and father when they ring, ring you up after marriage how is he taking care of you you should say he's taking good care of me although he is not you need to work with your husband and do not report to anyone else because why no one has got rights to enter into your married life neither should you allow anybody to take your husband for a ride same principle applies to husbands yeah your parents are asking how is my daughter in law is she behaving well and all that those are all private matters please don't interfere she is my wife and we will do what what is necessary tell in a very respectful language yeah don't say it in the same arrogant and rude tone they are your parents you need to show that respect honor your father and mother is another doctrine that you see in philippians 6 that's a commandment yeah show due, show that due respect and with all due respect you tell this hey it's okay i will take care i'll manage all good nothing may be good you may had a fight but then fight happens within the four walls of the bedroom and that you don't scream like donkeys you have fight gently okay why because i'll tell you uh, genesis 3 proves to me see i'm not able to get into the other side yet i just got carried out i have to read the lot of things in that chapter i'm 100% sure this is not a last session because why we have, we have other more other two scriptures to discuss and this is a new revelation i'm telling you i noticed this but i have not gone into this revelation holy spirit is doing a tremendous job today wonderful truth from the word of god is being revealed to you and me are you all learning something now don't get offended don't get worked up nobody is watching you right you are listening to me the voice of god is flowing through my mouth i am not talking to you father is talking to you holy spirit is talking to you take it in a positive sense nobody is watching you you and your conscious conscience you know what is wrong with you therefore take it easy my mother in laws my father in laws my son in laws my daughter in laws my father mother everybody yeah have that open mind only then don't get offended don't immediately become the touch me not plant ah <laughs> this is devil you go and touch him immediately like serpents right you touch the serpent so they'll be coming opening lifting up the hood to just give you one whack with their teeth and you're finished but not before you touch them right you understand and that's where christians are very very smart and shrewd oh brother i didn't go for fight brother but if he comes for fight i will teach him such a lesson who are you serpent yeah your attitude is venomous your attitude is full of poison my brother this is not bible let him touch me brother let him slap me brother let him ask me anything but he is my brother if he doesn't ask who else is going to ask why because you fall by the second commandment of jesus love your neighbor as yourself yeah as much as you love yourself you love your neighbor would you bear any harm or would you go around running for sickness and disease and accidents and tragic incidents and all that no you you love everything good for you you love every, everything that is positive for you but how is that you love all harm for your neighbor and everything negative and all that no learn to cover up the mistakes but talk to them privately and advise them gently and if they don't listen to you don't count them as your enemy second thessalonians 3 says that they are still your brothers they are still your neighbors they are still your wife 
wives and they are still your husbands they are still your in-laws daughter in laws have that respect for your mother in law and father in law yeah they may not have learned this principle probably they are traditional tra traditional folks and they have not even touched bible in their lifetime catholic people probably you you might be or you grow up in a charismatic environment and you know the bible in and out don't start judging them from day one have the patience pray over it be compassionate from your character what you're reflecting of christ in you yes christ like mindset they see in you how much ever we yell at her look at her patience look at her responsibility look at the duties that she perform without any problem she does not complain about us to her parents or oh, their heart will be touched one fine morning you will see that they will become your disciple <laughs> they will say my my daughter in law you are not daughter in law you are my daughter yes yeah same principle applies to father in laws also and <laughs> are you are you understanding something i'm talking here about the authority and also the relationship that falls within the peripherals of authority that's why i'm touching about upon various relationships within a single house in the, in, in, in your household it is all happens within one house you know one family i'm not talking about multiple families here yeah i'm talking about a single family here and you all need to understand all of these takes place within the single family and all of these are inevitable because why you need to live with this with these relations with this with this kind of relationship gentle relationship kind relationship compassionate relationship patient with each other and all that and that's called as the fruit of the spirit and it's going to be tested right from your home you are like that venomous plants and that biting serpent at home and then you go outside and you call out brother jesus loves you go to hell man this is exactly what god would say <laughs> you thought i'm yelling at you no <laughs> during the white throne judgment this is exactly what you will hear from the mouth of god mouthpiece of god and jesus already gave us the indication in matthew 25 will turn around and say that he i knew not who you are why because he was the prophet of god doing wonders and miracles and yes it is true but how were you conducting yourself before your in-laws before your wife before your children what were you at home he will start the inquiry from your home from your family then your neighbors and then he may consider uh all that you did for the lord in the name of jesus glory goes to jesus you have no part in that beloved if you are going to have this kind of understanding oh under the authority of god i have done so many miracles i have built this church i have wrote these many books i spoke these many sermons how was the condition of your soul spirit body and mind before your family what is the condition or the quality of the relationship that you had with your wife same applies to wives with your husband god will start from there and perhaps these guys are all of them no i will tell you without a doubt they never had good relationship with their own family members with their own blood relations like the cousins nephews nieces and all that right all of them they would say get lost you know god called me a minister you are nothing before me arrogant people and they go to the world achieving what achieving nothing you achieve many things is what you are thinking but all glory to jesus because for those people's condition or the people who came in search of jesus asking for help and favor and uh, all sorts of uh, what is it problems they had and all that they come to jesus and you are just a representative jesus is merciful towards them and you are thinking ah oh, look at the power of my prayer what nonsense rubbish stamp all these pride self pride and self prejudice and right under your feet right now don't even wait for evening or morning right now god is compassionate towards his people brother and you are the minister of god which means you are the servant of god and you have nothing to take back home man understand this my sister you are in ministry huh? my brother and that includes me many days i get overwhelmed in joy what a message you gave and you know why i am overwhelmed in joy that message is primarily for me and then goes to the 
you know next people there are so many sermons where after the sermon i had to sob before god because why as i am talking the holy spirit will reveal you are not exactly aligned to this sermon your lifestyle is exactly not matching to this but don't look at me with that doubtful eye yeah? this is how you talk no no i'm i'm promising you if i have, would be talking 10 sermons out of which eight sermons my lifestyle matches i can guarantee that but there are still one or two things that are wrong in me because why i have i have the carnal flesh as much as you have beloved i'm very honest to tell you that but i am very very sure certainly sure that i will fix those two things with the help of my holy spirit and by the grace of my lord jesus and with the fellowship of my father before i close my eyes in eternity do you have that confidence matthew 5:48 john 14:12 that's my destiny why because i have belief in my authority that is the authority of the kingdom of heaven authority of the father he is never going to let me down or forsake me hebrews 13:5 says and that too when i'm going to be harnessed with him each time holy spirit reminds me oh he is going to definitely help me without a doubt yeah some of you if you are alive attend my funeral ceremony and then you will know <laughs> talk to my wife i'm not sure who goes first but <laughs> if she is alive talk to her <laughs> talk to her <laughs> brother don't be worried about too many things that happens through you it's for others god has raised you as a ministry but for you it is your family and your own body your own mind your own spirit and your own soul did you take good care of those then you have a place in heaven not that all you did yes it's a good thing that you have yeah hey, you get a special place you get a special reward you get a special honor before god but then these are not the primary matters that would take you don't assume looking at the ministers of god missionaries of god evangelists of god priests of god oh definitely they are going to go to heaven not necessarily and not at all i can be firm i can be bold pastors are you offended please don't get offended what is the condition of your soul you have that secret lust in your heart ha huh? you still have that right hand getting somewhere and the, the bribery or you play with the church money and are you corrupt but you have a mega church or you are leading a beautiful worship you are a worship leader and all people cry and sob oh this brother picks up the mic you see all people cry what an anointing on the brother right not on the brother the anointing has been given to make the people weep and repent and that's from above given to that brother as a gift to serve others but the gift is not for the brother that brother should seek god for his own forgiveness for his own shortcomings he need to be an overcomer only then he gets place if is falling the, under that authority yeah and you re, yeah new and and this this words what i'm telling you is if you have accepted christ as your head you are not that maharaja to everyone right you are the servant to everyone because why christ was serving others he said those who shall be the least in my kingdom they will be the first i mean those who shall be the least on earth they will be the first in my kingdom if you are first on earth that i'm the minister i'm the priest and i'm the high priest and growing that long beard and wearing that long robe god looks at you as said white wash tomb matthew 23 you take and read how many times you would have called them as hypocrites hypocrites gnashing his teeth probably because why god jesus loved him loved them a hey, come on you change your attitude don't take glory of all of these stupid things because they don't take you of course it's a great privilege to be the minister of god you are not misunderstanding is what i assume yeah it's a great you get your special rewards i can guarantee that 100% you get that crown of life special rewards from god great minister of god you did not misuse your talents or waste your talents you have used them for the glory of god serving others you of course get that honor but then that will not cement your spot in the kingdom of heaven never ever think you will anyway reach paradise because you are serving god no not necessarily i hope you understood now coming back to the original point i don't know why i went from here to there probably to touch upon the my time is almost up but i will cover this at least okay all mother in laws father in laws all parents uh, you all are with me no all the relations cousin brothers this brother that niece nephew nephew and all people understand you know the limits of your authority according depending on your relationship 
yeah you are given that's why bible gives you the title right they call you uncles they call you aunties they call you this and that no what is the aunties responsibilities and aunties duties and aunties aunties peripherals and aunties boundaries don't exceed that same applies to uncle same applies to mother in law same applies to father in law son in law daughter in law daughter mother father everyone son and children also you need to know your limits yeah i spoke li little bit um, from the uh, christ perspective if you are the minister in god and christ is my head you see and if you are the husband of the home and you are the man of the home of course christ is my head you know yeah christ is your head but you know what christ taught he taught you to serve others and that starts from your own family how you treat your wife how you treat your children ha huh? you will be judged from there all the way to ministering the world and ministering the mankind and sharing the word of god worship leaders running a prayer cell deacons this and that that comes next which is nice which is very good all of you should have some or a spiritual responsibility else you don't deserve to live your life for god and his people all of you must pick some responsibility god has given talents to everyone i keep encouraging you right every single message i tell you this don't sit lazily at home do something for god of course but not before you have achieved everything that you are supposed to do for your family being the head of the house being the head of your wife being the head of your children or wives have you taken good care of your husband helper are you helper means what not polishing the shoes not like that but understanding the husband's emotions husband's problems troubles he comes back after work and you should ask him honey why are you looking so sad today what happened and i'm telling you women i'm telling you you are so so wise and bold and courageous you have that warmth and men require your support they cannot live without you 100 percentage they cannot live yeah and please build that intimacy but i have not reached my original point i was so shocked when i read this genesis 4:1 with that we will close okay genesis 4:1 now when bible says now therefore hence hang on there okay now means what until then adam did not know his wife huh? of course they know each other adam knows eve eve knows adam what they say good morning ha huh? ah, come let's have coffee they have coffee i see nice scenery no the sun is uh, setting that side and sun is rising this side uh, look at the dew look at this bird ah, how colorful it is huh? very very nice and by then the lord will come they will, he will have fellowship with them and they will be roaming around with god and all that and secretly he will be waiting for her husband to sleep or you know have his snacks with the, all the animals or something like that and she slips off and goes there and has a secret fellowship with the devil this was the business to happening between adam and eve who is saying no to this tell me if you are saying no to this prove it to me why was bible not registering the statement before genesis 4 or before the sin entered into this world or while the sin was entering into the world why they were not having intimacy they did not even know their duties they did not even understand the responsibility and the relationship and their boundaries and their intimacy they need to build the love for each other was no i mean it was not existing it was a big no and that's why you see that you know bible is not leaving behind that statement now read bible like this yeah, tell me i mean repeat after me now genesis 4 first word now now means why now hmm? because they lost everything they lost their dominion they lost their relationship and fellowship with the father they lost the eden garden their one their beautiful home like all of you are having 10 story building huh? that eden garden which god built for that natural bungalow or villa is trillion times beautiful wonderful pollution free they enjoyed their life they don't have that house anymore they are kicked out of the house yeah they lost the birds of the air they lost the animals which used to play with them now the same animals are chasing them because why sin separated them now they are moving around with spears and arrows and bows and this and that yeah in genesis 4 later you will see the ma man started to hunt the animals and they start to eat animals blood and flesh yes the same animals are chasing them now 
they go and they want to hug that lion and lion is um, it says and they get scared they lost everything and now they look at each other adam when i read that i was very emotional i start to weep badly adam you are the only one i have eve says and eve looks around and adam looks around and says eve you are the only one i have and for the first time they hugged each other and they kissed each other with that love with tears sobbing down their cheeks and adam says for the first time to eve eve i forgive you i forgive you you have done something in secret without my knowledge and i was a very stupid person that i didn't fight for you i blamed about you to god and i'm very sorry i need the forgiveness from you but i forgive you too and eve weeps all the more because ladies weep all the more anyway <laughs> don't don't ask me why is that because why i will tell you women are so so tender they are full of warmth i'm telling you husbands love your wives god has given them the special quality that warmth that warmth i'm sure eve sobs more than adam and she hugs him and she says honey i'm really sorry sweetheart i shouldn't have done that and there they begin a new life as good as they are getting married only the marriage the real marriage took place on that day why because they have nothing more to lose in their life they lost everything they're standing there all alone the animals are chasing them thorns are puncturing their heels whatever they sow they are not able to reap in fullest measures they have to work hard to get the fruits and to get the vegetables and all that but earlier they were just talking to the plants show me a method where they have gone through this agriculture farming and all that nothing they got to talk to the plants hey give me this and the plant gives now out of your sweat verse number 18 genesis 3 sorry genesis 3 19 in the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to your ground for out of it you were taken and uh, wait before that cursed is the ground for your sake in toil you shall eat of it all the days of your li- uh, life toil means what you know plowing plowing the land sowing the seed watering it safeguarding it from the wild animals fencing it and watching it and manuring it watching over the reptiles coming and eating it and grasshoppers coming and all this thing started toiling but that was not the case before if that was the case god wouldn't have you introduced the toil curse the method of vegetation the method of agriculture was completely different before curse entered into this world they got to just talk and they got what they need now they don't have that authority anymore sorry they lost everything their powers their dominions their relationship with god everything and they both look at each other all alone they stand on the ground can you imagine and god deployed angels ensure they don't get back they can't go back there they will be killed now they move far away from that place because they're scared of god they're scared of god yeah you'll be scared of god if there is sin in you but you will love your father you will be waiting to rush into his presence look at jesus ah oh, he will be ministering the whole day but when evening comes he will rush to the father father where are you you have the similar attitude after every day or you come back from work you don't have that lust in your heart huh? you did not look at that neighboring colleague you know with the female with all the lust in your heart and you did not flirt with that guy without your husband's knowledge yes then you would definitely rush to the father's presence with all your heart mind and soul jesus did that now they don't have anyone they're standing all alone they're looking around full of open earth they don't have anything to eat they start from scratch and they need, they understood that they need each other they understood that intimacy they need to develop from now on and they understood their mistakes they had that repentance in their heart and therefore now adam knew eve his wife now she he knew that love for her and he, she knew she knows that love for her husband and then they they met with each other and she conceived and you know what interestingly now he calls his wife with a name eve yes 
love makes him to name her wife or name his wife sorry name his wife all these days hey women come here hey lady come here hey idiot come here something like that <laughs> yeah because he is the head and all that and that's why probably eve went far away from adam and she found a different partner and his name is devil she found that attraction in the serpent why because they never developed that intimacy sorry my time is up but i have to take that one one or two extra minutes hang on yeah and both were equally to be blamed eve should have stuck to her husband and taught her taught him about love and yeah and she should be more submissive and all that she also moved far away it's okay get lost man i'll find a different partner now they look at each other they knew each other and adam knew eve his wife first time bible introduces eve this is the reason yeah and she conceived and bore cain and said i begotten a man from the lord then she bore again yeah eve means what you know mother of children i'm sorry i missed a verse um actually the intimacy began as as early as genesis 320 i i missed it i'm very sorry I apologize adam called his name's uh, wife's name eve because she was the mother of all living yeah and why because he gets reminded of that blessing you will be fruitful and multiply now slowly his brains are starting to function all these days i think it was only mud in his head or something like that slowly he's starting to think why because all the reasons i gave stands true they are feeling alone they lost a relationship they lost everything and slowly that love starts to develop he calls his wife's name eve because she was she was the mother of all the living because she was the mother of all the living means what he has not yet known her they were not intimate enough but after that now adam knew eve his wife okay forgive me for uh um, missing on genesis 320 i was always thinking i missed something yeah i'm sorry but then what i told is true as early as genesis 41 is when they were unified united yeah but all the reason see all these days he never called her by that name he was able to give name for all the cattle of the field and this and that they had no relationship right my beloved uh wives and uh, you know husbands listen you are falling under the authority of god the first thing that you need to develop is love each other love each other start from there and then slowly the love will be transferred to the external peripherals what within the family or in laws you will love your parents you will love then it travels to the next peripheral what to the neighbors then it travels to the next peripheral to the entire world your coworkers everyone you will love those that are not able to love their wives wives not able to love their husbands they will not be able to love anyone in their life you can definitely check on your own love the intimacy you have for your wife that's why you are not able to love the world that's why you are such a useless creation of god god is not able to use you are you all with me huh? all right always remember genesis 3 what 20 he called his name eve genesis 4:1 we will conclude it here and we will continue from where we left okay 1 corinthians 11 3 we left but we will read from 4 to 16 we will complete it right i don't think so we are going to close <laughs> very soon right i i thought today is to be the last session but it is not it's going to take time may god bless us heavenly father we want to thank you for this wonderful time and opportunity oh lord that we have learned important principles on the from the relationship between a husband and wife and the relationship within the family and many new things you have taught us god and thank you lord correcting the error which i had committed genesis 320 the first time he calls her eve and yes all the doctrines you have taught us holds the truth that they were not knowing intimately each other and that's why he never called her by name and god if that is a situation in my brother's life in my sister's life may they learn from these principles and today may they start to love each other with all intimacy in jesus name we pray amen god bless you stay connected i will soon meet you by the new session and may god lead us amen